Milky Sensation Steven Universe readies his last spoonful of Colonel's Classic Cream Corn. That looks more like cereal than it does creamed corn. Stew man in the house, what you got, what you got? I got four empty cans of Colonel Colonel's Classic Cream Corn. Cool. I ate four cans so that we could all go together. That's so thoughtful, Steven. Unfortunately, though, uh, we gotta go on a mission. They make it sound like the gems have to do that right this second in order for the coupons to count. The gems on the temple door are in the wrong order in this shot. Pearl and Amethyst gems should be swapped. Said gems also completely disappear in this shot. This sounds more like one of those cheap Java phone games more than it does an N64 game. We're gonna sink them all! <laughs> what was funny about that? Steven is playing an RPG, which you'd think would require minimal button pressing since a lot of it is just menus. But no, let's just have Steven's thumb slap two buttons all day long, because that's totally how a video game works. Project Vlog? That's golf backwards. Thank you for the beneficial information, Commander Obvious. Okay, so... Controller? No controller. The console as a whole disappears in this shot, this shot, this shot, and this shot. Then there's a controller. Then there isn't one again. Then the console follows suit. Holy shit. It uses high-frequency sound waves as a me You know, Steven could just say he wants to watch the thing on the TV, and I'm sure the gems would comply. They're not assholes. But no, we need a plot to happen, so I guess not. It's not like anyone got hurt and Steven left it. <laughs> Steven? Now we have to replay the final dungeon all over again! Just look it up on TubeTube. Tube. Rose's door. Your gem is opening your mother's room. Are we about to have another onion trade situation where the episode keeps saying things we can clearly see happening? Steven, Steven don't go in there! Why can't he go in there exactly? Seriously, the gems never exactly specify why this room is dangerous. And while we can clearly see why it wasn't a good idea later on, you'd think the gems would offer more of an explanation instead of just saying, don't go in there, and then dropping it. Do the gems have a history of this room being dangerous? And if so, why do we never get to see it? The music here is incredible. It sucks that Turner is so stingy on copyright when it comes to their music. I wish I could play these for a lot longer than I can. <laughs> I want to see the end of my game without being interrupted. This shouldn't work according to the room's logic. In Catch and Release, it's established that Steven can't hear the rest of what Peridot was going to say because he has no idea what Peridot could have said exactly. So I assume the room isn't capable of displaying and or mimicking things outside of what Steven already knows. So then how is it able to show the rest of Golf Quest's secret ending if Steven didn't actually see it? I guess it could have made an inference, but then why didn't it do that for Peridot later? Double chocolate cinnamon twist with sprinkles on the side. Why would you want the sprinkles on the side? Also, this part of the soundtrack wasn't officially released, but the music here is a great touch as well. It sounds glitchy and fucked up, like a CD or a record that's scratched and makes the music skip. It's honestly really fitting and adds to the atmosphere of this episode even more. All the lights are on, but no one's here. PD? Why would Steven see PD as Frybo? I would think that Steven knew PD for at least a little while before Frybo, and if anything, Steven should have disassociated PD from Frybo, considering not only the events that took place, but also the fact that he literally watched Frybo burn. But no, he even calls him Frybo when he's leaving. I think I'm gonna go look around some more. See you later, Frybo! This is either a somewhat fucked up way for Steven to see PD, or an acknowledgement by the Crewniverse of how little PD actually matters. The bag of donuts Steven was holding disappears in this shot. This scene is really great. There's still this sense of uneasiness to it, despite us thinking Greg was still somewhat normal, followed by the slow reveal that Steven is still in the room and that this is just a better crafted illusion. Actually, the entire concept of the room as a whole is really interesting, since things are more or less developed depending on how much Steven knows about said thing. And that concept is genuinely explored really well in this whole episode. The atmosphere is second to none. I have to applaud how well this was done, despite its flaws and plot holes later on. This is easily one of my favorite season 1A episodes. It's all the fakeroo! Fakeroo. 
Another nice touch that I'm not sure is intentional, but notice how the floors and walls disappear in these triangle looking shapes. Some N64 games, with Super Mario 64 being the most prevalent, had their collision and texture data mapped through triangles. And sometimes if you corrupt the data of something like Super Mario 64, the floors and walls could have portions of this data disappear, which creates triangle holes in the geometry. Since the room is being overloaded here, it could be assumed that some of this data is being removed to save space, which leads to these same triangular holes. That's really damn cool to me, even if it's unintentional. What do you want, Steven? Why can this room suddenly talk to Steven right this second? I want to be back with the gems! <gasps> I fail to see why this ejected Steven from the room rather than the room taking Steven to gems that the room generates itself. Is it a result of the room being overloaded? Because it sure isn't explained. Guarded! <gasps> Ow. All right, Steven! <laughs> <laughs> I always get what I want! That is a horrible message to end the episode with. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding.